So hello, in this video, I'm going to introduce you to Napari. This presentation was given at the EPPN 2023 in Angers. It is divided into two parts. First, a short introduction to what Napari is and what you can do with it. This is followed by a session on getting started with Napari. In this session, you will use the Napari software to analyze an image and then design and modify a plugin. As a EPPN session, it will focus on plant phenotyping. This video focuses on the short introduction, so I invite you to watch the second part of the video to find out how to get started with Napari. So let's move on straight on the subject of the video. So what is Napari? So Napari is an n-dimensional image viewer. These images can be manipulated using plugins. These plugins are widgets, I mean tools to help you process or analyze your images. We will look at uh, these three points in this video. To explain things better, I've given this video a structure. I've divided it into four parts. Firstly, I'm going to explain the context of this tool. Next, I'm going to tell you what Napari is, and then I will explain what a plugin is and what a widget is. So let's get started. In a phenomics research, more and more articles are being published using computer vision. In these articles, we can see that the words plant and phenotyping are being cited more and more. We can deduce that Deep learning is now widely used in the field of phenomic. Not all scientists in this field are deep learning or data scientists and science specialists. Most are biologists or agronomists. For this now fits in data science, several tools are proposed by the state of the art to manipulate deep learning models more easily. Let's take a look at two of these tools and describe some of their shortcomings. Deep Image is currently the essential tool for manipulating pre-trained deep learning models. It provides an interface in which you can select uh, deep learning models and perform inference on your images. This tool is an image plugin that you can easily download from the image plugin bank. However, the plugin has one drawback, the programming language. The plugin was developed in Java. Today, more and more programmers use Python to develop their scripts, and Java can be an obstacle to developing an interface on image or modifying code for the majority of programmers. So the second tool is Google Colab. Google Colab is a Google service that provides a notebook for developing Python code. For example, a user can develop a deep learning model from scratch or modify part of the model Unlike Deep uh, Imagey, here Google Colab lets you develop a model. However, there are two drawbacks. Firstly, you need to have some Python programming skills to develop your model. This poses a problem for programming neophytes such as biologists or agronomists. Secondly, as a Google service, Google has a right to read your data and your code. Actually, to develop your model, you are bound to store your images in a directory located on the Google Drive, which is also a Google service. This problem of confidentiality concerns many research laboratories, in particular the medical fields. So to sum up, we have a tool that is limited in terms of plugin development because of Java. We have a tool with confidentiality problem and a need of programming skills. Faced with these drawbacks, we have come up with a new tool, I mean Napari. Napari is an n-dimensional image viewer. It is ideal if you have RGB images, 3D images, or a sequence of images. Napari offers standard tools for image annotation, object segmentation, and object tracking, for example. Napari is written in Python. This is a great advantage for the Python community, which has a large number of members. Using this language, Napari enables users to develop and deploy their own plugins. I'm now uh, going to show you a few things you can do with Napari. First of all, you can write code and interact with your data on Napari. 
For example, you can write a segmentation algorithm and see the result directly in the Napari window. On Napari, you have a plugin that lets you annotate and process labels using classic image processing techniques. Some plugins allow you to manipulate a deep learning model. For example, you can train or retrain a denoising model with the N2V plugin. Once you have developed your model, you can infer an image and view the result directly from the Napari window. If you have 3D data, there are a plugin that allow you to uh, extract and analyze surfaces. On Napari, you have a lot of plugins. In total, uh, we have 326 plugins. So there is a Napari Hub page where you can find out about any plugins you find interesting. The Hymofen team has developed two Napari plugins. These plugins incorporate deep learning models. There is a plugin for detecting apples, blossom in orchard, and another plugin to detect apple in an orchard. Now let's take a look at the technical aspects of plugin. So technically, a plugin offers three tools. A tool for adapting input data. This tool is called Raider. A tool for processing your data. This tool is called Winjet and a tool for adapting the data output. This tool is called Writer. So let's look at these three tools one by one. For the reader, a user may have data with a very specific structure. To make this data processable on Napari, the reader offers the user the option of writing a script. Here's an example. Suppose you have a set of RGB images with an incomplete mask data set. When you input them into Napari, you want each RGB image and mask to match. To do this, you need to write a script in the reader that matches the RGB image with its mask. For the widget, a user can propose image processing method. This method can be conventional or use a deep learning model and present the method in a widget that appears in the Napari window. As a widget tool, a user can, for example, suggest a leaf segmentation method to complete the mask dataset in our last example. For the writer, a user may require particular output. It is possible to obtain our data either in a compressed file or in a particular image format. For example, a user can integrate code into a writer to get images in a compressed file. Taking the last example, a user can save his masks in a compressed file. The second part of this video will focus only on the widget tool. So we won't talk about the other tool. Here, I will give you a quick overview of how to design a plugin. There are three main stages, creating the package, designing the tool in the package, and deployment. This is the package creation stage. Creating a package inherently requires a great deal of programming skills. To make package creation accessible to everyone, I mean novice and advanced programmers, the Napoli community has developed a tool using a cookie cutter. Cookie cutter is a command line for creating a project from a template. It is an interesting tool because all you have to do to design a package is answer a few simple questions. These questions are divided into two main parts. First, there are questions about the description of the plugins. I mean, name of the author, email, GitHub directory, for example. And then you have uh, technical questions about the plugin, creating a reader, a widget, and a writer, for example. Once you have created your package, you need to find the widget.py file and then integrate your code into a function. Adapting the input and outputs to the Napali convention. For the user interface, simply use the magic library to make the widget visible from the Napali window. 
once you have integrated your code into a function located in the uh, widget.py file, you need to connect this function to the napoli.yaml manifest. This manifest is the central point of your plugin as it connects the tool to the Napari window. The Napari YIML file is divided into two parts. Firstly, the tools are defined with a unique identity. Then the tool is defined in the appropriate section. For example, for the widget tool, its unique identity is defined in the command section. And then the widget tool is coded in the widget section. Once uh, the tools have been connected to the Napari window, the metadata must be defined to make the package functional. This metadata can be found in the setup.cfg file. In this file, you can define the dependencies, I mean the Python libraries that are useful for your running uh, the code you are integrating into the widget.py file. Next, we define the folder in which the widget.py file is located, I mean the source. Finally, we define the entry point that defines our package as an Apari plugin. Finally, when the code is working and ready to be shared, we define a few tests to ensure that the plugin works properly, regardless of any changes made by any user. For example, for a plugin that segments a LGB image to a binary image, we can write a code that guarantees that the output is still a binary image. At the end, when everything has been written, you can deploy the plugin to the public. I've given a brief outline of the steps involved in a deployment. This subject will not be covered in the second video. Note that the deployment requires a GitHub and a PayPal account. Deploying the plugin is divided into five steps. Firstly, the package is added to a GitHub directory accessible to everyone. Next, we generate an IP token on PyPy. We put this API token in the GitHub directory as a secret key. Then we build the package. Finally, we load the package onto PyPy using the twine command. This video is now complete. In the second part, we will get started with Napari. We are going to design and develop a plugin through a number of exercises on the GitHub page.